All right. And we back with another episode of, hey, I'm just asking. And today we want to talk about Michael Frey Salters, the original big homie. Now, to some, he's known as the ambassador of DC. To others, he's considered as the king of DC throughout all sides of the city he was affectionately called Frey man Michael Frey I would say is one of the most respected gangsters in DC history the original big homie man Michael Frey Salters now out of all of the legends that I blogged on thus far Michael Frey probably has more credibility than them all. Man, he went as hard in jail as he did on the streets. Man, Michael Frey was definitely one of them ones. DC, original gangster at his finest. Before Murder Cap Town, you had to earn your respect in D.C. with your fists. And they say Frey's skills were legendary. And that's big. If you don't know the history on D.C. boxing or D.C. boxers or what D.C contributes to the game go do your history on that and go see how dc boxing is still relevant to this day but that's another blog so man you gotta think if he wanted the sharpest in the land he was respected for his hands so hey let's start with lawton first the belly of the beast Man, this jail has some of the worst horror stories known to man. Man, Lawton was petty gang. But that's another blog. So in 74, at the age of 19, man, Michael Frey got caught up in a botch robbery gone wrong. So it was off to Lawton. He went. The gladiator school. Hey. But I guess he felt like, hey, he, I'm here. I might as well start making my name. And he did. Gaining notoriety as a fighter in the trenches. Man, Frey was so ill, man. Like I said, with that boxing game, with that hands. And you know how many... It was, it was just too many sharp people in D.C. at this time. So for him to be going like this was, man, you know he had to be top flight. So he would go so hard as he would have a chair in the rec hall and dare you to sit in it. Wow. And Lawton? And Lawton? Hey, man, it's, it's legendary stories. Of how Frey was washing, washing them up, man. But hey, let's get back to it. So that lets you know, Frey's presence was definitely felt in that Lawton institution. And that's gangster. When you can have the rest of the killers and gorillas who don't give a fuck about who you are. Man, show respect enough for you. To stand on your own with no security when most killers, most killers wasn't doing that in Lawton. So, man, that was big respect, man. That's Mike Frey and Michael Frey demanded that. So we're going to go on to his second stint in Lawton. 
man, his hustle game got on steroids. <laughs> man, Frey was coordinating deals through jail. Man, to Rough Buff, Buffalo, New York, Rochester, Jersey, and of course, Maryland. Y'all already know how that go. Man, his girl and his crew was hustlers. So he managed to run his operation better from the inside. Maybe setting the blueprint for what another legendary DC hustler, Rayful Edmund, pulled off as well. Man, DC has definitely made its own mark in that drug trade era. It was rumored that Frey lived comfortable his whole bed. What I think he did, five? I'm not sure. But his ball status and connections made him a mediator of the highest degree. Man, so he had respect all across the city because no one wanted to cross Mike Frey. With money, power, and respect comes bad habits. And it's alleged that Mike Frey fought heroin addiction in Lawton only to fight his demons and reform to immediately get back to the bag. So, yeah, man, Mike Frey definitely, man, earned his stripes in jail. So since I gave you the jail history, now it's time to talk about his street cred, man, raised uptown. And like so many stories, Frey felt the need to provide for his family by any means necessary, doing whatever it took to get paid. And you know how it is with Northwest, uptown. We'll talk about that later. But anyway, Frey chose two Hobbies, robbery and heroin, but he also liked to box as well and still gained him respect from other great street fighters, man. Also professional boxers, so it's still talking about his knuckle game. Man, Frey protected all affiliated with him and would never tolerate disrespect without consequences, man. Ray Edmund, Wayne Purry, Alpo, or any other name you can name, knew what it was with Michael Frey. Man, Ray Edmund had DC on lock because he had the best plug and the best lane. Man, Ray revolutionized the drug game. So there was a power switch in wealth. When Rayful took over, as far as the street cred goes, Michael Frey had more allies than Ray because Mike Frey paid dues outside of most of the kingpins that were so-called established through PCP, Love Boat, Water, was a gold mine because this is DC's Drug of choice. Hanover's place. Had that. And like I said, you know about Uptown. If anybody in the city, well, this is the one that we'll talk about. The myth. They say that Uptown is the most money-making part of D.C. That is 100% correct. <laughs> that is the correct answer. No currency flows through the city like it does uptown. So, with Mike Frey, heroin was his cash cow. But with cocaine, Frey saw the future. So now, let's start with Rayful Edmund. Michael Frey was older than the new generation. So he looked at the new school as brash, loud, no longevity. 
and the streets say Ray paid for passes to avoid Michael Frey. Man, Michael Frey jive like protected Ray for Wetman, man, on a few occasions. Michael Frey was definitely protecting him and getting paid well. Don't get it twisted. That is what it was at that time, right? Alpo, now Alpo Martinez, man, didn't get no respect from Frey. Frey was one of the first to warn Alpo, man, leave the city and stood on D.C. business. Man, Poe had to stick and move in D.C. because Frey already done his homework and was hip to Poe from his New York people, schooling him on how messy Poe was, man. Petty gang. So Alpo was a target. He encountered a lot of friction and haters here. Man, Poe took L's trying to set up shop in D.C. And man, Frey allegedly got him for 10 keys with no response from Alpo. Like he ain't want that smoke. But this would come back to haunt Frey. Paid in full too. Now this is where Wayne Purry comes into the picture. Frey considered Wayne Purry uh, dirty and cruddy after the meeting that they had. Because Frey, well, not Frey, but Wayne Purry was trying to be Frey's trigger man. But Frey was like, nah, you know, I'm good. So I guess this is at the time when Wayne... And Poe hooked up, so Frey had a bag on both of them. So they don't tell y'all about that. Like, Frey had a bag on both of them. Like, what we doing? Frey had a snake in his camp, though. Michael Jackson. And it's said that, man, Michael Jackson was the type, man, he was jealous of Frey. Even called himself Jonan on Frey. With the slick, you know, the slick style that Frey had, man. So he was jealous of Frey and felt he was underpaid. Yet, this is the type of guy that they say was always fumbling the bag. Like, that's the type, type of guy Michael Jackson was. But at the same time, Frey saw something in him or thought he was a good dude, man. And tried to look out for him. So by him feeling like some type of way about Michael Frey, this was an opportunity for Alpo and Wayne Perry to make a power move. So on July 16th, 1991, Michael Jackson set up Frey to be killed. Wow. Game over. Alpo got arrested later after. And when he ratted on Wayne Perry, right? Frey's nephew, who was causing havoc in the city, man. Poochie. Man, they set up a meet and greet with Wayne Perry. And they said, man, he beat WP to the white beat, man. <laughs> Severe head injuries for at least some sort of payback for Michael Frey. And that's ironic, man, at the end of the day, that Frey knew Alpo was no good, man, and kept pressure on him. Man, it's easy to see why Ratpo had no problem snitching on DC as well, man, because the pressure was here. How he was going to go to jail anywhere, man, and wasn't going to see DC anyway. But that's another blog. Man, Michael Frey bought an OG style to the game, man. $250,000 chains, man. Custom. That's an 84, y'all. Big fight nights in Vegas, man. Five-star restaurants. High-end parties. Fly clothing. Beautiful women. And was able to solidify a popular brand of his own black snake heroin 
on the market that elevated him to kingpin status, man, these accolades will always be glorified. But Michael Frey protected so many, man, and deflected a lot of violence that could have got out of hand in D.C., in the city, man. The original big homie. Man, Michael Frey, Triple OG, man, he taught us how the game was supposed to be played. But once DC was up for sale, where people traded loyalty for money, this began the downfall for a lot of our DC legends. But I don't know, man. Tell me what y'all think. Michael Frey Salters, the original big homie. Hey, like this video, share this video, comment, and subscribe. Hey, I'm just asking.